today we're talking about caffeine. We're talking about the afternoon coffee break. And we were just having our break and I thought, let's do a bit of a vlog on what's in our coffee. Why is it so good for you? But there's some things you need to worry about. So we are talking coffee or specifically caffeine, whatever's in this beautiful brew that Lynn's just made. And we're gonna look at what's in it. Why is it so good for you? What are some of the downsides? And importantly, a bit of an understanding around your daily coffee as to what's in it. Not just the coffee, but the caffeine content, which varies, varies quite dramatically. And we need to understand that, especially if we don't want to overdose on caffeine. So highly, I'm gonna keep drinking. I'll tell, us, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about, first of all, caffeine. What is it? Why is it so good for you? Give us, give us the idea. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so uh, caffeine is actually a naturally occurring substance and we know it because it occurs in coffee. Mm. But you also get quite a lot of caffeine in things like green and black tea. Um, it comes in chocolate, especially dark chocolate. So cacao, cocoa powder, all have caffeine in them. And then there's around another 60 different types of substances that occur in nature, like cola nuts um, and all sorts of berries that you find it in. You get it in yerba, all sorts of strange substances, guarana. You'll see them often on the shelves billed as the, you know, the energy products. So yeah, it's in around 60 <coughs> different products around the world. So, so as a stimulant, what does it do? What's the, what's the effect on the body when, mm. I, when I have my 19th espresso for today? <laughs> so what's the, experience, what's the effect on the body and maybe run us through what are some of the positives of caffeine mm. and what are some of the negative effects for some people around too much caffeine? Sure. So um, basically caffeine is a stimulant. So it's been used for years and years as a stimulant. It acts on the brain and the nervous system. So if you can tolerate caffeine, and not everybody can, because some people are actually quite sensitive to it, but if you can tolerate caffeine, then it will probably make you very awake, very alert, very energetic. <laughs> Might not last long though, could be short-lived. So athletes will use it for performance. You know, if you're going to run 100 meters and you want that fast acting burst of energy, great before you run your 100 meters. May not help you with a marathon because it's not gonna be around um, long enough in its mm. really powerful form. So it can help you, as I said, with athletic performance, with any kind of mental task that you've got, if you've got work to do, you've got study. It's known for helping people get through the night. If you wanna pull an all-nighter, you're out at a nightclub, and then you'll probably take some caffeine. And I hear that we live longer. Well, it is, so again, the research is not conclusive. Oh, yes, it is. But coffee drinkers yes. are reported to live longer than non-coffee non drinkers. So I'm sticking with my, caf my caffeine. <laughs> and again, we don't know what the effect is, but the results are positive. It also helps a few diseases. So it's known to help with um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, can help with bowel cancer. Um, mm -hmm. It can also help with things like... Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, they're obviously diseases of the brain mm. and it acts on the brain and the central nervous system. So it's got a lot of benefits mm. when it's used right. So on this side is the benefits and there's lots of those. And I presume there's a couple of negatives if we don't don't look after the amount that we can chew. Hey, it's all about balance, right? <laughs> so that's the, that's the, the peaks formula is making sure we're in balance. Peaks formula is all about balance. And you know, you can get all those great effects if you can tolerate <clears> caffeine. <throat> yep. As long as you don't go too far, everything in moderation, remember. And um, you'll hear us say that time and time again, but it really is true with caffeine. Some people, if they drink too much, and I'm talking, you know, 15 cups of coffee in a day, they might start to feel anxious. Um, they can feel agitated. But it can also cause effects like depression, mm. uh, rapid heartbeat, uh, palpitations. So a lot of people will get palpitations when they take the caffeine out. The palpitations go away. It can cause all sorts of other effects like insomnia. Mm. So it is known for keeping people awake. So mm. caffeine has what they call a half-life. Okay. And what that means is if I drink this cup of coffee and it's got some caffeine in it, that caffeine is going to stick around in my system for a long time. So after six hours, around six hours, half of that caffeine will still be in my system. Six hours later, half as much again is still in my system. Mm -hmm. So after I've gone through a whole bunch of six hours, still got a tiny bit in my system, which mm -hmm. means it's also cumulative. Mm -hmm. So I take one coffee, something's <coughs> left in my system. I take another coffee, I've got a bit more left. Take another coffee and it gradually builds up. So if you're a coffee drinker, you like your caffeinated coffee, you've been drinking it all day, 
And then by the time you go to bed, you may just find you can't get to bed without something to knock you out. Yeah, yeah. So it can, it can unfortunately have that effect. It also um, it has a few nasty effects on the body. So if you are consuming a lot of coffee, it can cause osteoporosis. Well, okay. It basically sucks calcium <clears throat> out of the bones, which is obviously not something we want, especially as we age. And it can cause miscarriage. Now, we don't know a lot about that, but again, if you are pregnant, just, you know, do, do read up about it and think about the effect. Mm. All right, so there's some, there's some positives and some negatives. One of the areas at Peaks we look at, one of our, our pillars of wellness is sleep. And so in sleep, we look at making sure that the person's routine, especially the PM routine, is very supportive of good, of good, uh, good quality sleep. And as Lynn said, one of the things we look at is stimulants. And we have caffeine, coffee or caffeine as one of the stimulants we, we look at. Now, in a lot of cases, we are aware that coffee has caffeine in it, but you may not know what other products have caffeine in it, but also what types of coffees have different types of caffeine. So let's walk through it because all the coffees are not alone. So when I have a coffee, what is that coffee? If it was a capsule coffee, like an espresso coffee, yeah. give me an example of the amount of caffeine in one of those. Is that an advert for Nespresso? That is an advert, and this was brought to you by <laughs> Nespresso, and if they give me free coffee for life, it's worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, a typical Nespresso, um, you know, your, your espresso size, is going to have about 60 milligrams. Okay. So it's a tiny amount, but that is enough to give you a jolt of energy. Mm, so, especially if you're caffeine sensitive. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So 60 milligrams, anybody's going to get a bit of a feeling from that if you're caffeine mm. sensitive. Yeah, that'll have you wide awake. So compare that then with, say, instant coffee. The other thing, the scale is just a spoonful in the cup of hot water. What sort of quantity of caffeine in that? So it depends how much coffee you put into your cup, but if you're putting about a teaspoon, then you're going to have about the same. So, yeah. you know, your instants and your Nespresso, your Laws, all of those different types of machines, are going to give you roughly the same, about 60 milligrams. All right, but I'm a coffee snob, so I'm going to the local cafe, oh. and I'm going to get a nice little double shot latte with a, with a lemon and a twist and a, all the stuff. So Lemon, a yeah. twist, <laughs> latte, milk. I was, I was trying to be a snob, but it was going to work. Keto, right? <laughs> I was trying to be a snob, it's not going to work. So what if I went to a coffee shop and got one of, one of the big coffees, you know, the big takeaway coffees? Yeah. What sort of caffeine content is that? So remembering that when they make a coffee at a coffee shop, a barista makes your coffee, it's not actually a big coffee. Mm. What he's doing is he's using espresso size shots. Mm. And the reason for that is when they're running it through the machine, to get the really nice flavoursome and aromatic, the good quality, the healthy stuff, you're actually just using that first portion of water that comes out that's that's had the coffee that's been run through the coffee <laughs> everything else is just like dirty <clears throat> water so basically if you've got a nice big you know coffee and it's got perhaps two shots it's a double shot and topped up that'll have anywhere upwards of 150 milligrams if you've got a really big you know the what it, the tall <laughs> ones that might have four shots or more you could be talking about 300 milligrams mm. of coffee. So that's equivalent mm. to a lot of the, the you know, the instance of the capsules. Mm. So when we say to someone, how many coffees do you have down? They say three coffees, obviously three big long blacks versus three spoonfuls of instant is a, is a vastly different amount. It's so we've got to understand that. Yeah. What if I'm not a coffee drinker? This is my mum, she loves her tea. Ah. What about tea? Tell me about tea and caffeine. Is there well, caffeine in there? There's lots of caffeine in tea. You'd mm. actually be surprised. And many people will go from coffee and they'll stop over from drinking coffee and start <coughs> drinking tea. Mm. And, you know, green and black tea has all got caffeine in it. So you'll find in an average cup of tea, you're probably looking at 50 milligrams of caffeine. So it's about the same as a, as a pod mm. type of coffee or an instant coffee. Well, wow, okay. What if I don't do hot drinks? I'm just the energy drinker. I'm the, uh, for sponsorship reasons, the Red Bull drinker. If I shoot my Red Bulls rather than have my coffees, give me, the, give me the sort of the comparison on caffeine quantity. Yeah, so because again, those manufacturers are going for a big hit, <laughs> you know, trying to get you really awake mm. and get you addicted, quite frankly, because they're sugary, so you've mm. got the sugar, big energy burst, and you've got the caffeine to keep you going a bit longer. They will have, again, anywhere above 100 milligrams. So they're like probably two of your pod type coffees. Mm. Mm. So if you've been drinking your coffee all day, and then you knock back a few of those, by the time you try to get to bed, you, you will have had a significant quantity mm. of caffeine. Especially if you've had your coffees at night and you wash it down with a little bit of chocolate, because apparently chocolate has a good smack of uh, caffeine in it as well. Chocolate's also got <laughs> caffeine in it. Now, if you're having milk chocolate, now remember, on the keto lifestyle, milk chocolate has no place. <laughs> but 50 grams, so half of a small bar of milk chocolate, is going to be about 10 milligrams, not a lot of no. 
caffeine. And that's because, quite frankly, there's not a lot of chocolate in it. <laughs> Milk and sugar and carbohydrates are the devil's food. Ah. But if you go for the really good quality dark chocolate, mm. if you were even able to eat 50 grams, you'd have about 60 milligrams, about the same as a cup of coffee. Okay. So again, if you're sensitive to caffeine, and you're not having a coffee at night, but you are having chocolate, mm. that could be enough to keep you awake. Mm. So we're thinking sleep. So one last question, Lynn. If I decided I want to get good quality sleep, I love my coffee, but I'm going to go across to decaf and have some decaf instead. Mm. What's the difference in the amount of caffeine I get in my decaf coffee versus my normal coffee? So decaf's got a lot less mm. and anywhere sort of 10 to 20% of your normal coffee. So it's still so got some in it? Still got some. They okay. can't extract it completely. Right. So the extraction process either wash the beans with water or blast them with carbon dioxide. So it's chemically extracted. And most of the reputable companies can get it down to very low levels of caffeine, mm. but still about 10% of your regular. So if a regular coffee's got about 60 milligrams, a decaf is going to have around six milligrams. Cool. So you can have 10 decafs for every one of your regular. You heard it here first, 10 gig, light them up, 10 decafs, shot them back and you've had your one. <laughs> <laughs> so the takeaway, the takeaway is really simple. Caffeine is a great stimulant, has some great positives, but also some negatives. Firstly, understand what is caffeine and what it can do to your body. Secondly, understand what it does to your body. So do a bit of a test on your effects when it comes to caffeine, and then have a look at your diet, what you drink and what you eat, and see if there's any sources of caffeine that you think you need to reduce or modify, especially in the PM leading up to your PM time when you're starting to get ready for bed and starting to get ready for sleep. Hope you've enjoyed, see you soon. Let's have a coffee. Coffee time. <laughs>